I got my first opportunity as a leader when I was 24 years old. I, I kept bugging my kept bugging my, my manager. I was like, God, I really want to be a leader. I want to be a manager. Can you get me in there? Can you get me allow me to be a sales manager? And I write about it in my book. I tell the story about Tim Baker, who was my general manager. He was one of those scary guys. He was he was one of those guys that was very intimidating. And I didn't I got called to his office one day and I thought I was in trouble. I'll never forget walking over, I had to walk from <coughs> one building to another, and I was scared. Like my hands were sweating, like I thought I was in trouble. I was about to get one of those verbal lashings that he gave out to people. And I go into his office and lo and behold, after he talked for a few minutes, started telling me his story about rags to riches, which he told a lot. He started I realized that I wasn't there to be persecuted, I was there to be promoted. And I got my first opportunity as a sales manager at 24 years old. And I want to talk to you today about that journey and, and what I learned through that. Now that I've had the opportunity to, to have spent 15, 20 years in the corporate world, in the, in the leadership roles, acting out leadership roles in business, and now for the past five years, I'm equipping business leaders for success. CEOs, entrepreneurs. Here's one thing. Tony Robbins says success leaves clues. And I'm not the smartest guy in the world, believe me, but I have figured out that there are a few things that all great leaders have in common. And if you want to be a great leader, these are characteristics that you'll want to take on for yourself, that you'll want to figure out how to be effective at. And that's really what I want to do today is I want to share with you the mission because Mr. Baker, who had a military background, that day when I sat down there with him, he says, young man, do you want to be successful? I said, yes, sir, I do want to be successful. He says, then, here's your mission. He goes, you must become a student of your profession. And I was like, what's he talking about? He said, your profession is leadership. You need to become a student of leadership. So that's what I did. I started reading books, going to seminars, getting around other great leaders, trying to figure out what does it take to be a great leader because I knew I was behind. I knew I had some growing to do. And so I started that journey of leadership development and growth for myself. And so I want to share with you today that mission possible of becoming an influential leader, whether it, you choose that to do that in the classroom, in, on, the, on, the, on the court, or in college, or in the business world, wherever you find yourself, these are five key characteristics that will help you be a great leader. You guys ready? Yes or no? Yeah. All right, here we go. The first one is clarity. Every great leader has clarity on what their role is. Let me ask you something. Anybody know what this is? <laughs> most, of you, <coughs> most of you probably never seen one. It's an actual magnifying glass, right? Now, I know none of you ever did this, so you know, don't judge me. I know you didn't do it, but I did. When I was a little kid, I would take it out, and I would let the sun hit it. Look, she's laughing. Like, she knows what I'm going to work on. All right, so I, the sun was hitting, and I would find me an ant bed. And I'd give me an ant a really good tan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't judge me. I didn't kill any ants. I just gave them a good tan. The magnifying glass. Here's what's interesting. Clarity produces energy. <clears throat> when we can get clear on what leadership is, and at that point, it will give us the energy and the focus that we need in order to effectively go out and lead people. Do you understand that the same Energy that it takes to run a 75 watt light bulb will cut through that will cut through six inches of steel with a laser. Why? Because of the focus, because of the clarity. When you can get clarity on what leadership really is, but here's our problem: we don't really know. Let me ask you this: if I if I asked you to define leadership today, how would you do it? Could you do it? Leadership is probably one of the most abused and overused words in the English language. We say he's a leader. She's a leader. What does that even mean? Is it just because they're a good athlete or they're a good student? They get good grades and they score points? Does that really make them a leader? What, like, what is a leader? <laughs> Come on, workshop people. What is leadership? Influence. Influence. Leadership is influence. Dr. John C. Maxwell, my mentor, my friend, my mentor, I think defined leadership better than anybody. And he defined it with one word, and that was influence. Nothing more, nothing less. 
You see, because in order to be effective as a leader, we have to have the ability to influence people in a positive way. If you want to be a positive leader, we have to be able to do that. In our workshop, we talked about Martin Luther King. Would you, would you have considered him a great leader, yes or no? Yes. Come on, guys, yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. He had great influence on a generation of people. And then on the other end of that, you had Hitler. Was Hitler a leader? Yes. yes, he had influence. The question is, how you use your influence will determine whether you are an effective, a good leader, or a bad leader. But we have to get clarity on what leadership really looks like. And I think Maxwell does it the best. So that's the first. We have to have clarity. Do you have clarity? What is leadership? Influence. Come on, everybody wants out. Leadership is? Influence. All right, influence. Number two, we got to have competency. Leadership is a skill. It's something that you acquire. You're not just born with it. I love what Colin Powell said. He said leadership is, is not born. It's something that you acquire. It's a skill set that you're able to acquire over a period of time. And so we have to have a certain level of competencies in order to do that. When you get into leadership, there's, to be effective, there's really two things you have to have. And a, and a mentor might call it convergence. First of all, you have to have a passion for leadership. Not everybody wants to lead. And that's okay. Because leadership's not easy. It's just worth it. But you have to have a certain level of passion for it. A, a, a desire to want to help people and lead people. But with that, you also have to have a level of competency. You have to be good at it. And again, that's a skill set that you can learn over a period of time. And it's like I was telling them earlier. It's like riding a bicycle. Like you've got to figure it out. But once you do, it just... <clears throat> Excuse me, it comes natural to you. There are three key areas that I write about in my book. Um, I, I lost a book, <clears throat> excuse me, that'll be out here in a few weeks called the E5 Method, A Leader's Guide to Building a Winning Team. And in the book, I talk about how to really empower people as a leader and how to influence people. And there are three ways that we do this in leadership. The first one is, as you can see, it's modeling. Have you ever heard this? Lead by. Example. That's right. Lead by example. And so we have to model the behaviors that we want from our people. We have to show people what's possible. We have to show them what they're capable of. In order to illustrate this, I need a volunteer. Who would volunteer to help me out? You, sir? Come on up. What's your name? Dalton. Dalton. Everybody give Dalton a hand. Come on up here, Dalton. Dalton, we're going to cook a little bit this morning. So I'm just kidding. All right. So Dalton, I have here. A potato. Just a raw potato. That's your prize, by the way. So, <laughs> so Dalton, here's what I need. Can you follow directions? Okay, good. So here's what I need you to do, Dalton. I just need you to take this straw, just a regular straw, and I need you to push it all the way through the potato. Okay? Can you do that for me? Yeah. Just push it right through there. Nope. Come on, Dalton. You said you could follow instructions. <laughs> okay, so almost, right? Almost. You got it started there and didn't quite get it in. Now, here's the power in modeling. If you can do it, you can show somebody else how to do it. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So, Dalton, I've done this before and I can help you out. Okay. Would you want to know how to actually get the straw all the way through yeah, the potato? Okay. So, take your straw out and, and uh, hopefully it didn't damage it too much there. So, what I want you to do is I want you to take your fingers and just put it in, in there like that. Don't, not too tight, just kind of hold it there and put your thumb on the top. Like that. Got it? Got a good grip on it? Now what we're going to do is on three, we're gonna, I'm going to show you first, then I'll let you do it. <clears throat> we're going to go one, two, three, and we're just going to stab it right through there. All right? Think we can do that? All right, one, two, three. <laughs> all right, see? I went all the way through. I hit a, I hit a stud there, but it went all the way through. Yep, absolutely. We're going to give you a, I think I have another one here. I actually have another straw for you, Dalton. I think you've got one about had it. Yeah. All right. All right. So you can do it. Now look, you, you got to commit to it, Dalton. Like you can't. Not halfway. You got to go all the way. Oh. All, right? all right. So use use another part there and just all the way through it. All right. You saw me do it. You can do it. Here you go. Yeah. Give me that. All right. Perfect. So modeling is very simple, right? You just you just got to show people how to do something. Look, the difference between 
reality and possibility is potential. What are people, people capable of? As a leader, we've got to help people fulfill their potential. We do that through modeling. Very simple. Always lead by example. The second thing is motivating. Motivating people is how we communicate with them. We don't have time to go into it, but in our workshop we talked about the different personality types and how to effectively communicate with people in a way that empowers them, in a way that allows them to be their best, to do their best each and every day. And so <coughs> understand the importance of motivating people through communication. The last thing is, and the most important thing in my opinion, is the ability to mentor people. How many of you have a mentor, you would say? Raise your hand. Okay, a lot of you. A mentor is just someone that can help guide and direct you. Someone that can give you advice, help you, you know, along the way they've been there, they've done that. But they can help you really overcome yourself. All right? I need another volunteer. Somebody out there. Yes, ma'am. Come on up. Everybody give her a hand. All right. So to illustrate the, the power of a mentor, what's your name? Mackenzie. Mackenzie. All right. Nice to meet you. All right. So, Mackenzie, you can follow directions, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so, one of the great things about having a mentor is they can help you overcome your limiting beliefs. We all have limiting beliefs, things that hold us back from really reaching our full potential. Um, in our world, we call them constraints. These are things that really keep us from doing our free will. It could be a lack of belief in yourself, your self-esteem, your confidence. All those things are things that will hold you back from ultimately reaching your potential. And to illustrate this, Mackenzie, I have here a pair of handcuffs, okay? Now, I'm going to put these, have you ever had handcuffs on court? No, 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 don't answer that. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Put your hands behind your back. All right? And we're, these are real handcuffs, by the way. Um, they're actually from the uh, Amarillo Police Department. Please don't tell them I have them. Um, but I'm going to show you. Okay, well, not too tired. Just, just to illustrate the point here. You good? All right. All right, not too tired. Okay. So now... Turn side of one. So Mackenzie has these handcuffs on. <coughs> and what happens is these limiting beliefs that we have keep us from really ultimately reaching our potential. So Mackenzie, all I need you to do now is just scratch your nose. <laughs> you said you could follow it. Ah, she got it. <laughs> all right. So it's hard. It's difficult, right? Yeah. When, we have, when we have these constraints, when we have these limiting beliefs, well, here's what mentors do. And all great leaders do this. They help their people overcome their constraints, to break free to, so that they can reach and ultimately fulfill their potential in all that they do in their job, in their life, and everything that they do. Does that make sense, yes or no? All right. Thank you very so much. So as great Christine. leaders, we've got to be able to influence people through modeling, motivating, <coughs> and mentoring. The next thing is all great leaders have a strong commitment, a strong level of commitment to get the job done, to help people no matter what it takes. You ever been up to, how many of you play sports? Raise your hands. Right? There comes that time, right, when you've got to rely on somebody to get the job done. Somebody that's committed to work, putting in the effort, doing the work. I love what Pat Riley said. He said, there are only two options regarding commitment. He goes, you're either in or you're out. And that's the same thing with leadership. You can't, you can't fake it until you make it leadership. Like, you've got, to, you've got to commit to it. You've got to be all in. I'm reminded of a story that a friend of mine told Les Brown tells a story about two buddies that, that entered the uh, military on the buddy plan back when they had a buddy plan. So two guys went in the military together, went through <coughs> basic training. Shortly after they got out of basic training, they found themselves in combat. And one night, they were going to go out and do a sweep, try to figure out what was going on out there, do a little reconnaissance work, and they got ambushed. And bullets flying everywhere, it's chaos, everybody... Their platoon finally retreated back to base camp. <coughs> and one of the buddies comes in and he's, he's looking for his friend. And he says, where's Marvin? Where's my buddy? Where's Marvin? He couldn't find him. These guys had been best friends since they were little kids. He said, where's Marvin? Where's my buddy? And he's looking all the way around for him. And he can't find him. And he says, I'm going out there to get him. Anybody want to go with me? And this platoon leader says, man, are you stupid? You can't go out there. You're going to get killed. He says, I'm going to get him. Anybody want to go with me? They said, no, don't do it. He says, I'm going anyway. <coughs> he takes off. 
that night to find his friend. The next morning, the whole platoon goes out to kind of see what the casualties are. And he had found this guy. His buddy had found him. And the platoon leader comes up on him and he says, Man, you fool, didn't I tell you? He was dead. He goes, look, excuse me, look at you. You're wounded. He asks him, he says, was it worth it? And that guy looks up at him and he says, you know what he said when I got here? He said, what? He said, I knew you would come. I knew you would come. That's the type of commitment that we have to have in leadership. You have to be committed to your people no matter what, that we're going to help them succeed. We're going to have influence on them. Does that make sense, yes or no? Yes. All right, you with me. Here we go. Competitive. All great leaders are competitive. <coughs> Doesn't mean they always win. Just means they're always competitive. They'll do whatever it takes to win. You guys understand that in business and in life, there is a scoreboard, right? Yeah. We, have to, we have to have that internal desire to want to be successful. We have to want to make sure that we win in business and in life. Vince have already said winning isn't everything, but it's the will to win that's everything. And that's what I, you know, I love my son who's here with me today. Zach is, is very competitive, has that desire to, to want to win at all costs. And that's what we have to be able to do. I can remember when I took over that first job, I told, I told my manager, I said, look, we will sell 60 units this month. And they had been selling about 15. Like it was a big stretch. He looked at me like I was crazy. But I'm competitive. I wanted to do it. I wanted to prove that I could do it. And I wanted to win. And sure enough, 90 days later, we were selling 60 units. But it was that desire, that competitiveness that we have to have and want to win each and every day. You guys competitive? You want to win? Yes or no? Woo! Absolutely. All right. Consistency. Consistency. We have to be consistent. We live in a world of instant gratification, do we not? You guys want something to eat? Just put it in the microwave and you get it. Great things in life don't always happen overnight, and neither does your ability to be effective and influential as a leader. It takes time. It takes consistent <coughs> and persistent effort over a period of time to get the results that you're looking for. Consistency is the DNA of mastery. Robin Charman, love that. If we want to master this art of leadership, we have to be able to get to that point to where we're consistent over a period of time to do that. So I, I want to give you an illustration. How many of you have ever seen one of these? Really? <coughs> I didn't figure any, any of you guys have. Old timey water pump, right? You don't just turn it on. You got to pump it. I want you to visualize a, an old timey water pump right here. We've got a We've got a water barrel right here to pour all the water in. For those of you that have done this before, when you start pumping it, is it hard or easy? Hard, right? Water's all the way down in the bottom. A lot of pressure there, so we got to start pumping the pump. We start pumping that pump. Does water come out immediately? No. Right? There's no instant gratification. There's no results immediately. Here's the problem <coughs> and the challenge with most people in leadership. They get a leadership position, they get a leadership role, and all of a sudden, there's, there's no results. And so they give up before they ever saw any results. When you're pumping the pump, does that mean it's not working? No, no it's just not working yet. Here's another challenge. We start pumping the pump, we do it long enough, consistent enough, and all of a sudden, water starts coming out. We start getting results. Guess what we do? Hey, look, I'm the result. Happy on the back. Right? What happened when you stopped pumping? What happened to the water? Went on. So now you got to work twice as hard just to get back to where you were at. Doesn't make sense, does it? So we got to pump. we got to be consistent. Pump the pump long enough until water starts coming out so we start getting the results that we're looking for as a leader. And guess what? When water starts coming out, is it harder or easier now? Easier, right? You can sit there with two fingers and water gets out. It's the same way in leadership. One of the greatest joys I've ever had is, is building a team that could, could go on without me. We had done it long enough and consistent enough 
that it just kept running. And if you're going to be successful in leadership, that's what it takes. It takes that consistent and persistent effort over a period of time to get the results. Now I want to finish with this today. I want to give you three things that you need to know about leadership. Number one, repeat after me. It's possible. It's possible. Come on, guys. It's possible. It's possible. Guys, it's possible that you can become an influential leader. I don't care who you are, where you grew up. Guys, I grew up in a small town in West Texas. Valedictorian of my fifth grade class because I was the only kid in there. Right? It doesn't matter where you come from, what your background is, what your life experiences are. Leadership is a decision that you make. Make the decision to be a leader in each and every aspect of your life because it's possible for you to do it. In 1954, nobody had ever run the mile in less than four minutes. Anybody here run the mile in less than four minutes? Huh? All right. In 1954, nobody had run a mile in less than four minutes until along came a guy named Roger Bannister. Roger used to visualize himself running a mile in less than four minutes. And sure enough, he breaks the record. Under four minutes. You know what's interesting about that? After he did it, several other athletes did it, including high school kids. What changed? Gravity? The type of sneakers that they wear? No, the only thing that changed was, it's possible. Say it, it's possible. It's possible. Once you believe something, then half the battle's over. So believe that you can be a great leader, that you can be an influential leader, do great things. It all starts there. Number two, repeat after me, it's necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary that you take on this challenge of becoming a great leader. Whatever, whether it's with your family, your life, and business, whatever you go on to do. Guys, we need you. I love this. It's the future business leaders of America. You guys are the future, yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. And like I said earlier, the future needs you, I promise. I deal with these guys every day. We need some sharp, young, brilliant leaders taking over all aspects of our country. It's necessary. We need you each and every step. The last thing I want to share with you before I close is, repeat after me, it's up to me. It's up to me. That's right. It's all about you. You have to make this decision that you want to become a leader. Nobody can do it for you. Look, I know I'm kind of buff and, you know, I'm pretty good shape. Just kidding. But if you want to go work out, you want to get in shape, like, I can't do your push-ups for you. Like, you have to do them. And this leadership journey that you're on, nobody can do it for you. Nobody can make that decision for you but you. It's all up to you. Guys, you can do it. I believe in you. You can have incredible, incredible results. And you can complete your mission of becoming an influential leader. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it.